We brought you the news yesterday. Yet another victim of notorious serial killer John Wayne Gacy has been positively identified. He was a young man from North Carolina. Yeah, so how did the investigators make the identification after all of these years? Joining us right now to talk a little bit more about this is Karen Binder. She is from the DNA Doe Project. Thank you so much for coming on. This case is just fascinating for so many reasons. I mean, we know that you're one of the team leaders on this case, uh, Gacy case. Uh, first of all, good morning to you. Good, good morning. How are you? Good, good. Well, you know, we want to ask you, how did this all, how did this all start um, with you tracking down this one particular victim? So um, we work in partnership with the Cook County Sheriff's Department. Uh, they contacted us. Um, you know, uh, quite a long time ago now, before 2020, um, and asked us if we could assist in this identification. We started working on the case in 2020. Um, when we uh, got the sample available with DNA matches, um, we were able to identify a candidate within eight hours. So, but there is a process that happens before that with um, extraction of the DNA from the remains and sequencing um, and then bioinformatics and so on before we get the DNA matches. Um, after we made the identification of a candidate, we worked in partnership again with uh, Cook County and they made notification to the family and then uh, obtained a confirmatory assessment to um, match to the victim. Okay, so that makes perfect sense. You, you need something to match what you have, what you have in your hands, uh, that being the remains. You mentioned uh, somewhat uh, the work you do in the lab. What I want to focus on is what happens when the family, so desperate for closure, uh, learns, yes, now we know what happened to our beloved son. How was that information relate to you? You're in the trenches. Does somebody from the police department then say, hey, we, we, we talked to the family and they were so grateful that they have closure. Do you, are you made aware of that conversation? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're so thankful that um, they're, they're communicative and uh, that they partner with us uh, because those of us at the DNA Project are not experienced in making death notifications and things like that. So um, uh, Lieutenant Jason Moran from Cook County was the person that made the notification in this case. He has relayed to us that the family was um, obviously devastated, but also relieved to finally have answers after all of these years. Yeah, wow, that is incredible. Can you tell us what was the specimen in particular that you were able to use to do the DNA match on this? And, you know, and, and because DNA has been, DNA, um, you know, uh, this kind of uh, research, forensic research has been around for so long. Why the delay in, in, in connecting this piece of evidence to the victim? So what we do is a little bit different than traditional DNA testing. Um, the traditional DNA test that um, was already used in this case years ago is uh, usually what people refer to as CODIS. Um, it, requires, it requires a very clean DNA sample. Um, it requires a very clean DNA sample. 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 It requires figure out who the victim is. So that's what was done in this case. Um, we use a combination of a second cousin and then several fifth cousins wow. to make the identification. So it's a lot different than traditional DNA testing, which had already been done by and the, County. And the, and the specimen was, what was the specimen? It was a molar tooth from the victim. Okay. Interesting. Uh, fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And, and I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but given what you've accomplished already, uh, there are still some victims that have yet to be identified. How confident are you that we might be able to completely close this out? Um, you know, I think in this case, we were quite lucky with the good representation in the database of um, distant family members of this victim. I believe um, most of the other victims are also um, from populations that are well represented in the DNA database. Um, Caucasian people are very well represented. I hope that if uh, Cook County chooses to partner with us for the rest of them, um, we'll be able to make identifications of all the uh, remaining unidentified victims. How do you feel being able to, you know, help solve this case? Um, you know, it's overwhelming, uh, the response from the public, and um, the thing that really matters to us the most is just providing closure to the family. Uh, years ago, I think it was more common, since there was no social media, you yeah. could lose touch with family members pretty easily, and um, I believe that's what happened in this case, and I'm really happy that we were able to provide uh, answer to Wayne's family. You're making a big difference in the lives of those people that yeah. are desperate for answers. Karen Binder from the DNA Doe Project. Thanks so much for joining us.
Of course, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I didn't understand.